My father was a preacher. He was the minister of the Central Christian Church in Orlando, Florida. And I was only five when this story took place. Now, preachers didn't make a lot of money in those days, and, and I didn't have a lot of things that other boys and girls have. I never had a tricycle or a bicycle. I don't remember having a pair of roller skates or a doll house. But the little girl who lived next door to me had all of those things. And she was very generous, and she always let me play with her things. And I was happy about that. But one day, and it wasn't Christmas, it wasn't Valentine's Day, it wasn't her birthday, it was just an ordinary day of the week. Her grandmother came to see her, and she brought the little girl a beautiful little doll carriage. It was made out of wicker, and it had little round rubber wheels on it. And inside, laying on, lying on a beautiful pink satin blanket, was a little doll. Oh, it was just delightful. Now, I didn't much like to play with dolls when I was little, but I looked at that doll carriage and that little doll, and I just fell in love. Well, all afternoon, we took turns because the little girl was very generous, and we pushed the doll carriage back and forth up and down the sidewalk and into the backyard, and we played together. And then it was time for supper, and the little girl's mother called her home to eat, and she left her doll carriage in my backyard. And I looked at that doll carriage and I thought, I wish that was my doll carriage. I love that little pink satin blanket. And I love the beautiful little doll inside. And I like to wheel the carriage down the street. And so I took the doll carriage and I took it to our garage and I hid it in the back of the garage behind a stack of dead tires. And I thought to myself, ha, huh, I now have a doll carriage. And I was very pleased and very happy. And later that night, the little girl came back to my house and she said, where's my doll carriage? And I said, well, I don't know. Well, she said, I left it in your backyard. Well, I said, you ought to be more careful with your things. And I turned around and went inside the house and left her in the backyard crying. Well, that night I went to bed and I lay in my bed and I thought, boy, I have a beautiful doll carriage. And tomorrow, I'm going to get that doll carriage out, and I'm going to push it up and down the street, and I'm going to have the best time with that doll carriage. Oh, wait a minute. I can't push the doll carriage up and down in the street, because if I do, the little girl will know I took it. Oh, well, I'll just play with it in my house. I'll push it from the dining room to the living room and into the kitchen and down the hall and back again. And then I thought, no, I can't do that either, because then my mother will know that I took the little dolls, the little girl's doll carriage. And you know, I lay there in my bed and I realized that I had a doll carriage and I couldn't do anything with it. When it was the little girl's, at least I got to play with it. Now nobody would get to play with it. Oh, the old devil had played a miserable trick on me and I'd fallen for it. Well, I didn't sleep too well that night, and the next morning I went down to breakfast, and I wasn't real anxious to go out and play, and there came a knock on the back door. And when my mother went to the door, there was the little girl's mother. And she said, Mrs. Book, yesterday afternoon my little girl left her doll carriage in your backyard, and your little girl took it, and I'd like for her to give it back. And my mother turned around and looked at me, and she didn't have to ask me. She could tell by the expression on my face. And she said, Joni, you go get the doll carriage, take it back to the little girl, and tell her you're sorry that you stole her doll carriage. Oh, well, really, I was relieved that I was going to get to give the doll carriage back because it wasn't doing me any good, and it wasn't doing the little girl any good in my garage behind the dead tires. But I didn't want to have to tell the little girl. I was sorry I stole. But my mother said that's what I had done, and that's what I would have to tell her. So I took the doll carriage back, and it took a great deal of courage and grit, but I said it. I'm sorry that I stole your doll carriage. And then I turned around and ran home, and my mother was waiting for me at the back door, and she said, up to your room, Joni. Well, I knew what that meant. We went up to my bedroom, and my mother said, Now turn over the bed, and as she did, she began taking off the little red leather belt that she was wearing, 
And my mother spanked me with that little red belt, leather belt until I cried. I cried because it hurt, and I cried because I was sorry. Now, my mother was just doing what God's told us to do because he's told mamas and daddies that they're supposed to beat the child and not to stop for their much crying because you may save their souls. I'd broken three of God's commandments in one afternoon. I'd coveted. That means I wanted something that didn't belong to me. And I'd stolen. And then I lied about it. I needed the spanking. And when it was over, my mother had me get down on my knees and she told me to tell God that I was sorry, that I had lied, and that I had stolen. And I did it. And when I got up, I still didn't feel any better. I'd taken the doll carriage back, and now the little girl and I could both play with it. And I'd been spanked, I'd been punished for doing what was wrong, but I just really didn't feel right. You see, my mother and daddy had taught me from the time I was little not only how a Christian should live, but what we had to do to become a Christian. I knew that sin had separated me from God. And I also knew what I needed to do to make it right. Well, I didn't tell my mother and I didn't tell my daddy. But the next Sunday, I had made up my mind that I was going to become a Christian. I was a week from being six years old. And that October morning, I sat on the front row next to my little brother. And we had a little game we played. Since we were sitting on the front row right in front of Daddy, my brother and I would pinch each other through the church service. And if he pinched me and I wiggled, then Daddy would get on to me for misbehaving. If I pinched my brother and he wiggled, then my Daddy would get on to him for misbehaving. So the game was to see if you could be pinched and not wiggle. All through the service, my brother pinched me. But I didn't pinch him back because I had much more serious things on my mind. I was trying hard to get up the courage to become a Christian. You see, my daddy wouldn't stand for any misbehavior while he was preaching the sermon. And if I did something I shouldn't do that would distract other people from hearing God's message, my daddy would simply clap his hands and say, Mary Joan, you sit up straight and behave yourself. And I'd be embarrassed in front of the whole church. Well, I didn't want to be embarrassed. But I knew that when my daddy finished preaching, he'd come down from the platform and he'd stand right in the middle of the aisle and he'd wait for somebody who wanted to come forward to become a Christian while they sang the last song. And I was already on the front row. So I figured the only place I could go was just walk right in front of daddy to the other side of the auditorium. And I knew that when I did that, he was liable to think I was misbehaving during the invitation him, and that would really make him angry. Well, I was more afraid of not getting right with God than I was afraid of my daddy's misunderstanding. And so I took a deep breath, and I started across in front of my dad. And he grabbed me by the arm, and I knew he was going to call me out in front of the whole congregation. And then he looked. And he saw tears in the eyes of his little girl. And I think the Holy Spirit prompted him to realize that I was not misbehaving, but I was about to do the most important thing I'd ever do in my whole life. That afternoon, they had to fill the baptistry. Because, you see, we couldn't keep water in the baptistry back then. We didn't have chemicals to keep the water clean. So the only time you put water in the baptistry was if there was to be someone baptized. So I couldn't be baptized after church that morning. I had to wait till that night. And all afternoon, they filled the baptistry. That Sunday afternoon, my cousin, Clancy Tinker, was having a birthday party. And Clancy Tinker's mother had a lot of money. And they were members of the country club. I'd never been inside the country club. It had a great big brick, brick wall all around it and iron gates and ivy growing on the iron gates. And I knew that behind that wall there was lots of beautiful grass and a big swimming pool and a beautiful country club house. And I'd always wanted to go inside. And Clancy was having her birthday party at the country club. And I'd been very excited about that because finally I was going to get to see what was inside those big iron gates. But you know, that afternoon, I thought, on the day that I give my life to Jesus Christ, I ought not to spend my afternoon at a birthday party. So I told my mother to call my Aunt Chloe and tell her I couldn't come. I never have been inside the big brick walls and the iron gates of the country club. 
but I'm inside the walls of something more important than that. You see, that night, Jesus washed all of the sins away and made me a brand new person. But you know what? When I got to the baptistry and I started to walk down into the water, the deacon who filled the baptistry that afternoon forgot that I was not quite six years old. And he put too much water in the baptistry. And my daddy realized as I began to walk down the steps that I was soon going to be standing in water that was over my head. And I'd drown before I could become a Christian. So daddy stopped me and he had the deacon hand me a chair, hand him a chair. And daddy put the chair in the baptistry. He had me stand on the chair. And then he baptized me into the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And I rose from the waters of baptism to walk in a newness of life, a brand new creature. The sin of coveting was gone. The sin of lying was gone. The sin of stealing was gone. And I had become a part of God's family, which was far, far more important than going to the country club could ever have been.